This is the first section of the variable acceleration chapter, and this is called functions of time. And basically what this is, is where the displacement, which we're using the letter S for, or the velocity, which we use the letter V for, or even the acceleration is given as a function of time. So basically that means we put the time in to work out the displacement or the velocity or the acceleration. So some examples might be um, your displacement is 7t cubed minus 3t squared plus 3. Or your velocity might be given as uh, a half x to the power 4 or x but t sometimes you might get x but this is in terms of t um, minus uh, 3t cubed plus t squared okay now there's some uh, things that we uh, need to make note of in terms of uh, these functions. And the first thing is with displacement, okay, when the displacement is zero, it basically returns to the start, returns to its start, okay. When V is zero, okay, it means that something can stop moving for um, a second. This normally happens when something may have reached its maximum or minimum height because at the maximum or minimum height it um, stops moving for a little bit think of like when a ball is move it like goes up in the air or comes down again when a is zero okay this means that something's reached its maximum or minimum velocity because it's not getting any faster it's not getting any slower it's now at a constant speed and when you've got a constant speed there is no change in the acceleration acceleration is zero so when acceleration is zero it doesn't mean the speed is zero it's a bit like a cruise control a body moves in a straight line such that its displacement s meters okay displacement is given as s um, at uh, from a point o that's where it starts at t time or time t seconds is given by this formula here s equals 2t cubed minus 3t for t greater than or equal to zero so no negative values of t part a find s when t is 2 so we just take the equation and we substitute in 2 very easy so 2 or s equals 2 times 2 cubed minus 3 times 2 well that's going to be 2 times 8 which is 16 minus 3 times 2 which is 6 so we end up with 10 and it's s meters so 10 meters there part b the time taken for the particle to return to o now if it's its distance from o and uh then for its when it returns to o that means that its displacement is zero which means s equals zero okay zero displacement it's back where it started so all we do is we set the equation equal to zero and we are going to solve it. So that will give us 2t cubed equals 3t. If I divide both sides by um, t, I will get 2t squared equals 3. Then divide both sides by 2 t squared equals two thirds so if i square root that t is going to be plus or minus 
root or the square root of two thirds square root of two thirds now t can't be negative it says in the question that t is greater than zero so we ignore that and um, the time it takes for the particle to return to s is going to be um, t equals root 2 over 3 seconds um, if we want to write that as a decimal so we'll do that on a calculator square root 2 thirds and we get remember we want to give our answers to three significant figures that would be 0 0.816 seconds so 0 0.816 seconds and you can give Eva as an answer a toy train travels along a straight track leaving the start of the track at t equals zero it then returns to the start of the track the distance s meters from the start of the track at time t seconds is modeled by and here we've got s equals 4 t squared minus t cubed and it says where the time is basically between 0 and 4 seconds. Explain the restriction. Right, let's look at the first part of the restriction. Where the time needs to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, now if I put a negative number into there. Let's say time was minus 1. So if I did 4 times uh, negative 1 squared. Uh, minus negative one cubed um, i'm going to get uh, a value that suggests it's actually gone it's not at the start of the track yeah so basically a, a, a value of t less than zero doesn't make sense because it's before the start of the track which is at time zero so um, this is before the train is at the start of the track yeah which is at t equals zero and then with the other bit that t needs to be less than or equal to four now if i put four in and i do four times four squared minus four cubed that's zero so at four seconds it gets back to where it starts now what happens if i put five seconds in okay so i'll end up with um four times five squared which is 100 minus 125 end up with negative 25 which is back before the start of the track okay so after four seconds the train uh, cannot go um, back back before the start back before the start now there's other ways you could explain this maybe better than than I do but we need that restriction because we basically can't go backwards in time um, unless you've got a time machine um, so we can't have a value of t lower than zero because this whole thing starts at zero and we can't have a value of t greater than four because it, it gets back to the start of the track and if you put values of t in bigger than four it suggests it's now moving backwards from the start which doesn't make sense Okay, our body moves in a straight line such that its velocity so now we've got um, a function of time for the velocity find the initial velocity so the initial velocity is going to be initial just means the start so we put t equals zero so v equals two times zero squared minus 16 times zero plus 24 so the initial velocity is 24 meters per second part b the values of t when the body is instantaneously at rest so at rest means that v is zero it stopped moving for a little while so we set the equation equal to zero like this 
So this looks like we're going to be solving a quadratic. So we'll divide both sides by 2 to give us t squared minus 8t plus 12 equals 0. So does this factorise? I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give 12 and add to give negative 8. I think that's negative um, 6 and negative 2. So this will become t minus 6, t minus 2 equals 0. So the value of t when v is 0 is going to be when t is 6 and t is 2. So at 2 seconds and 6 seconds, this thing stops moving for a little bit. Part C, the value of t when the velocity is 64. So all we do now is we set the equation equal to 64. So step number one will be to take away 64 from both sides. So that gives me negative 40. Then we can divide everything by 2. And let's see if we can factorise this. Two numbers that multiply to give negative 20 and add to give negative 8. So that's going to be 10 and 2. I just need the right signs. So it's going to be negative 10 and plus 2. So t minus 10 and t plus 2. So uh, the velocity is 64 meters per second at 10 seconds. We ignore the minus 2 because um, it says at, at the start here t has to be positive. So we ignore the minus 2. It doesn't make sense in the context of the question. So ignore that. And then part D, the greatest speed of the body in the interval. Black D. Now the greatest speed is like a maximum. A maximum occurs when what we've differentiated is, is zero. So let's differentiate this. So if we've got v equals 2t squared minus 16t plus 24, then if we work out what dv dt is, and we've done this in the differentiation chapter. That's going to be 4t minus 16. So we're going to set that equal to 0. Then we can solve it. 4t equals 16. So um, that will be when t is 4. So the um, greatest speed occurs when t is 4. Greatest speed is when t is 4. We now want to work out what that greatest speed is. So we now put that t equals 4 into the velocity equation. So that would be 2 times 4 squared minus 16 times 4 plus 24. And we'll get a value of t of 2 times 4 squared minus 16 times 4 plus 24 and we get a value of negative 24 meters per second now that's a velocity so that's telling us the direction it's going in so the negative tells us the direction we're not interested in the direction we just want the speed so we we're just interested in the 24 part so our final answer would be the speed that's why I asked for the speed not velocity is 24 meters per second all the negative means it it's now moving in the the opposite direction that's what the negative means right you should now be able to do exercise 11a on page uh, 184 so remember uh, s x equals zero means it's gone back to the start or its initial position. Same thing. When V is zero, you might say this thing in stand 
instantaneously at rest yeah and if you get questions where a is zero it may be that you find the maximum minimum speed velocity now what you could do is actually you'll also notice on one of the questions we did the last one that when the vdt equals zero that also told us this maximum minimum speed we get the value of t and we substitute it back in but this sort of leads on to the next sections in the book or in this chapter